I'm just a guy who loves Disney and has way too much time on his hands. If anybody from Disney is watching, please don't sue me. I'm here to rate, review, and describe all of your favorite things from the magical world of Disney. I'm File91E and welcome to my Disney News and Reviews. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Disney News and Reviews. I'm File91E. And look, I'm in a new kind of situation. Well, maybe not new as far as background, but it's retro month. And I'm really excited to uh, you know, to begin this. Sorry I missed last week, but I had a bunch of stuff to uh, you know uh, take care of. Had some family things, and I you know had to take care of. But hey, I had postponed it. One week missed from uh, Retro October. But this is cool. See, four by three. I got the the old school hat. Oh, this thing still fits. Grandmother knitted it, and uh, for whatever reason, I decided to put that in my opening video. I guess I wanted to have something. I wanted to look cool or hip uh, but eventually I, I learned my lesson and switched to the indie, you know, the indie hat that you all know and love but this was the OG this was the original so that's pretty cool just before I start everything let's just get into uh, where in the land uh, last time was the uh, golden zephyr uh, as we were waiting for the world of color uh, in Disneyland that was pretty cool uh, the golden zephyr looks really nice all lit up there and uh, yeah, like I said, this is Retro Month, Retro October, Retro October, whatever you want to call it. And it's the month where I'm going to be talking all about old school Disney attractions, stuff that isn't there anymore, stuff that's changed, maybe, whatever interests maybe, you know, that I want to, you know, this is my basically my time to go back and research all this old stuff and learn as much as I can about old attractions, especially attractions that interest me. And if you have any ideas that you, you know, rides or attractions or things that you might want to you know, learn about, uh, you know, just let me know and who knows, maybe it will, you know, wind up here on this show. Um, yeah, I've been doing some work actually, uh, with, uh, the website or, you know, or, you know, uh, the channel. I've actually, uh, uh, started a whole bunch of new playlists and I'm trying to go through all of the, uh, you know, the old, um, uh, you know, videos and put them in, uh, d into dedicated playlists. Uh, they're not ready yet. Um, but, uh, you know, but you'll be able to see them, you know, I'm, I'm, spl I'm, spl I'm splitting it up into, you know, gaming with Final Underbunny. I have a couple videos there that I started with that, so I want to be, you know, doing that. I'll put all the Disney Infinity stuff in there. Uh, then you got the cooking with Final Underbunny. I do plan on doing some more of those. And, um, you know, I'm, I want to split it up into the Final Underbunny Disney News and Reviews. I have actually, I actually have three different seasons if I, uh, if you, you know, want to call them that. Uh, you know, there was series one, which is kind of the old school stuff with my, you know, with the original hat and the original set of reviews that I did. And then there's a second one when I came back. Uh, I, I, you know, I took a brief hiatus and then I came back. And then there was the third one after I took another hiatus and then I came back. So I switched it up into three different seasons. And eventually the playlist will be set up and hopefully uh, easy for you for your viewing pleasure but so i just wanted to mention that gaming you know uh, with final under i got the star wars beta this past week and i might do another star wars beta um uh, video tomorrow so keep an eye out for that if you're interested if not uh you don't have to watch it believe me i'm not i'm, I'm not expecting everybody to like all the stuff that i put up uh but it's just something different and it's fun for me to edit so i really enjoy it so yeah good stuff there so yeah i think that's pretty much what's been going on with me this week we got retro october all this you know old school stuff really fun uh so yeah that's what's been going on with me this week let's get right to the news probably one of the biggest things that happened over the past few weeks is the official transformation of downtown disney to disney springs uh, disney springs leaders held a brief ceremony and the landings uh, water, or the landing sections Waterview Park, so that's pretty cool. Uh, also, Disney has released new maps and a new dedicated website to promote the Disney Springs uh, transformation, complete with an overview of all the shopping, dining, and entertainment offerings. So that's pretty cool. Check that website out. Uh, really fun stuff. Link is in the description box below. Uh, the My Disney Experience app has been updated to include additional features for PhotoPass. A new QR code can be displayed on the screen via the app, which can be scanned by the PhotoPass photographers in place of a photo pass cart or magic band so that's pretty cool you can just go hey scan it bloop and they 
put it right there on it. Uh, Disney has recently been expanding the scope of my Disney experience to include a more uh, PhotoPass functionality. The, la uh, the last update included pre pre previews of the PhotoPass images. Uh, the new version is now available in the App Store. So cool, check that out. Or just update your app. I have it, I updated it, it's good stuff. Next year's Night of Joy will see some significant changes with the concerts to be held at the ESPN Wide World of Sports. Uh, Night of Joy guests will continue to get admission to the Magic Kingdom, but Disney hasn't yet said if the park will be exclusively to, available to Night of Joy guests or if uh, access will be during uh, a regular park hours. Disney will be providing transportation between the concert venues at Wild World of Sports and the Magic Kingdom, so uh, keep that in mind. If you're a Night of Joy fan, they really sell out those shows. So they really like it. Starting October 16th, One Man's Dream at Disney's Hollywood Studios will be showing preview scenes for the upcoming Disney Pixar movie, The Good Dinosaur. You can see the preview through December 4th with the original One Man's Dream movie returning on December 5th. Uh, the Good Dinosaur opens in theaters on November 25th, so I guess that's going to be the one that I have to watch during uh, Thanksgiving. I guess that's the one. Alright, cool. And finally, Minnie Mouse is now appearing in a new character meet and greet experience at the Animation Courtyard at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Minnie has moved from the current center stage area to a new space outside of the, the, of the Disney Junior Live on Stage building. The meet and greet is themed after the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse TV show with Minnie appearing in her clubhouse outfit. So that's pretty cool. Good stuff. Good news. I don't. Uh, I didn't actually look up any uh, Disneyland news this week. Uh, don't worry. I'll get you some Disneyland news next week. Good stuff. Halloween in the park. It's fun stuff. So yeah, that's news for this week. So let's get right to the reviews. Retro news or retro reviews. All right, everyone, like I said before, this is Retro October, and we are talking about old Disney attractions, pure old Disney attraction stuff that isn't there anymore. And, uh, well, there are, there. let me just tell you before I start all this, there are reasons that these attractions aren't there anymore. They're not, they're not very popular, but they still hold some sort of nostalgia, uh, you know, for some other people, especially me. Uh, so the reviews might not be very nice, or, you know, uh, even, you know, the, you know, the star ratings might, you know, uh, might not be good kind of like Horizons, you know, Horizons was a great, a great show. Uh, I reviewed that a couple uh, years ago on my Retro October, and uh, man, uh, that was one that I would give like a four or five star. Uh, but a lot of the stuff that uh, isn't there anymore really aren't that, you know, aren't that good. But there are a couple things that I want to talk about uh, that do have some nostalgia for me, and uh, let's get right to it. So the first thing I want to talk to you about today, the first retro ride. It's a very retro ride. It only, it only lasted five years. That's the Flying Saucers in Tomorrowland in Disneyland. Now, this was, at the time, an e-ticket attraction, which, if you don't know what an e-ticket attraction is, that means it was one of the headlines, one of the good ones, one of the things that, you know, you know, you had to see when you got your Disney ticket books. And uh, this was one of, the, uh, one of those attractions that, well, everybody, well, you know, or they thought everybody wanted to see. This was promoted as, you know, a space age technology, you know, used for your enjoyment. And basically it was hover, hovering bumper cars, kind of that sort of thing. Uh, you would travel on a cushion of air in high tech bumper cars, that sort of thing. Uh, this opened in Disneyland in 1961 and basically just closed five years later, mainly due to production costs and the fact that not many people really liked it. It wasn't very fast. There wasn't a whole lot of, you know, insane bumping going on. Uh, there's a lot of um, old school footage of this, and uh, there, that's the reason why I wanted to talk about it today, because I was always interested in it and wondered, you know, why it only, you know, wh wh where it went, and the fact that it, I found out it only lasted for five years is a shock to me. When I look at old Disneyland stuff, I see the Flying Saucer attraction. I saw it on Roller Coaster Tycoon, and I thought, did somebody actually use this in a theme park? And the fact that Disney did is pretty amazing to me. Now the whole idea of the attraction is you would hop on in this singular little disc thing. Air would shoot up from underneath. It's kind of like an air hockey table. And uh, you would lean from side to side to make your little disc, this flying saucer go. You could bounce around and have some fun. And then after a while, the air would stop and you would go down and you'd have to get out and go again. Now, um... There is one attraction in Disneyland right now, or Disney, yeah, yeah, Disneyland Resort, 
or there was an attraction that had that same technology. It was Luigi's Flying Tires. I was fortunate enough to go on it with my brother. We were the only two on it at the time, and that was actually one of the first set of reviews in this new Disneyland set. And, um, well, it was quite interesting. Quite, quite interesting, to say the least. It was okay at best. Uh, you can't, uh, I, I, I can see why, you know, the technology was was uh, was you know was really revolutionary because it is pretty interesting to be hovering around on this air stuff but you didn't get much oomph with just the lean you you know it took forever to get anywhere and the fact that this the, that these the you know the luigi's flying tires one was uh you know uh you know built for three people i mean you really are not getting that much you know movement you all you all really have to go and they added some balls in there afterwards to you know big beach balls to try to you know make people uh you know enjoy it more it really didn't and now it's actually defunct and being changed into i i believe uh, actual bumper cars uh you know so well you know oops there and you know for disney they tried to bring that technology back it just didn't work out now like i said this did close five years after uh, you know after it opened uh during the uh new tomorrowland when that opened in 1967 the space was uh switched to the tomorrowland stage and then in 1986 it was uh, transferred into the magic eye theater which is where it stands currently uh, the magic eye theater is still there they have you know like you know, uh, movie you know presentations. I they, they had the Tomorrowland preview in there. I think that's where they're going to do the um, Star Wars preview. So that's going to be in there. Uh, so when you are in the Magic Eye Theater, think about the old Flying Saucers attraction that only lasted five good years in Disneyland. So what am I going to give the Flying Saucers of Tomorrowland in Disneyland? Sorry, I'm only going to give this two. It really isn't that good. Uh, there really isn't much going on. Uh, it, it is pretty interesting with the technology and whatnot, and there is some nostalgia there, but let's be real here. If it only lasted five years, and uh, they tried to bring it back, and then that only lasted like five years, I guess the technology, I, you know, I guess people really just don't want this attraction. Uh, it's interesting, but uh, not practical, I guess. So uh, there you go, the flying saucers. Two stars. And now, a random Disney fact with File 91E. Over 200 pairs of sunglasses are turned into lost and found each day at Walt Disney World. And that was a random Disney fact with File 91E. See, with everything being 4x3, some stuff gets cut off, but that's okay. Because it's 4x3. Can't really change everything didn't have that time but who knows i have some plans actually for uh for next year or you know if, if, if i can do it right or maybe the year after whichever but i i do plan on doing uh, something special for next year but i'm going to disney world next year or disney, or disney world yeah, yeah disney world next year and we'll see how that all works out so anyway moving on to ne the second retro ride uh this is also one that is kind of has a, a nostalgic value for me um, it's one that I see a lot in all of the old, you know, pictures. It's to me, it's one of the more quintessential Disneyland, Disney World uh, things, and that is the Skyway to Tomorrowland or Skyway to Fantasyland, depending on which way you want to go. Um, now, this is basically a gondola lift sort of attraction. Uh, you know, it's a transportation attraction. That I, I, again, I first saw this in Roller Coaster Tycoon, and I wondered who, what, you know, who, you know, who would have this, and I found out Disney had it. And uh, it doesn't really seem very practical because they're right there, and to have to go from one to the other really isn't much of a, uh, you know, of, of a thing. It does give an awesome vantage point of the park, uh, which is really cool, and uh, you can get some really awesome footage or some old retro footage that you can possibly look at and see that all, you know, that that, that you know, just the awesome top-down view of all the different things is really neat. Um, they lasted all the way up until around the mid 90s so uh the mid to late 90s so you can actually see some pretty decent video footage uh there but it's fun to look at the old uh, retro you know film footage so uh yeah that's really cool now this is in this was in disneyland walt disney world and even tokyo disney and like i said they all closed in the mid to late 90s uh mainly because nobody really wanted it nobody was really getting on it and just the upkeep to it uh was really a pain in the butt 
Uh, Disneyland's though was really cool because they had to build the Matterhorn around it. So you would go through the Matterhorn. You could see the you know, the racers racing underneath of you. The, the, you know that was really fun. The fact that they actually had to build the Matterhorn around it because this was the Matterhorn was built after this. You know they you know, they were like you know let's just um let's just just build this around this. Are we gonna have to shut everything down? Nah, we'll be fine. To be you know to be perfectly honest, they did not close the uh, the Skyway. While they were building the Matterhorn, they just built around it, and there was no day in which, in in any of the cases in which, uh, you know, the Skyway was closed to uh, to you know as they were building the Matterhorn. So that must have been one heck of a uh, 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 you know of a scene to see people working on the Matterhorn as you're going through. So that's pretty neat. Um, this was you know, what this you know to give a little bit of history. This opened in 1956 and was the first Von Roll type 101 aerial ropeway in the USA. Basically, Disney saw it and was like, you know what, this is cool. We're going to have this in my park. And they were like, sure, Disney, that's fine. And they did it, and it was awesome. And uh, you know, that was you know, that was that. That's what they uh, you know, it's what Walt wanted, so that's what Walt got. Uh, now the reason why I'm talking about it and mentioning it in such kind of a light because to me it does represent old Disney that's one of the few things that you don't see anymore you don't see that those those little things hovering along uh, you know Fantasyland and Tomorrowland anymore um, not like, not to say that it's a bad thing it's just when you look at old Disney pictures of Tomorrowland or Fantasyland you see the big cables and everything going across uh, all, all the different things uh, there is even a little bit of a um, tribute to the old uh, uh, Skyway on the new uh, uh, Matterhorn updates when they updated it a, a couple months ago they are there's some crashed um, uh, gondolas the old uh, the old things that you sat in, uh, in in one of the sections there so that's really cool the fact that you know they made it seem like the Yeti grabbed one and uh, you know tore it apart or whatever I think that's really cool good tribute good fitting tribute to the Skyway to Tomorrowland or Fantasyland so uh, yeah there was a basically you know the whole idea is you got on either on the Fantasyland area or the Tomorrowland area and it just took you to either of those places it's really simple um, basically they you know shut it down because they really wasn't getting much use and the upkeep was pretty tough and uh, now the, and, and they needed they basically just needed the real estate for other things like the, for instance the one in Tomorrowland the uh, Fantasyland uh, section over there that's used for uh, the um, the tangled uh, bathroom area the rest area so if you uh, are over there just uh, kind of look around and envision some these wires going all the way over to Tomorrowland and uh, you know that's where you would have loaded so that's pretty cool there so awesome that I you know I just love the Skyway I thought it was pretty cool um, granted I'm, I'm not a big fan of heights but I, you know that's one of those attractions I would have loved to have gotten on you know, as a kid but I didn't really make it we didn't get on it when I went down to 91 and uh, definitely not when I we went on it in uh, 98 um, so I don't know I you know it, it's just it's nostalgic for me you know it's in all the pictures all the old pictures and uh, you know it was fun to learn about it and learn more about it and um, you know if you do uh, you know you research you can find some really cool stuff about these old attractions that's why I'm doing this month just because I like to learn about all this old stuff so what am I going to give the Skyway to Tomorrowland or Fantasyland whichever one uh, I'll give this three it was an average ride it was a transportation ride they we have the Walt Disney World Railroad which is not going anywhere and we have the monorail which is not going anywhere this was one of the ones that could have gone because it only took you to pretty much two places that's all you needed but again it did give you a good vantage point and it was fun and uh, it lasted a long time again all the way up until the mid to late 90s so that's pretty recent kind of I'm not that old but you know uh, you know, it was fun. It was, you know, it, it was a cool thing, and uh, I really would have uh, loved to have gotten on it once. But alas, I can't, and so I can just have to go on it via YouTube and awesome videos from other people. So, awesome stuff there. So, the Skyway to Tomorrowland or Fantasyland, three stars. Check it out on YouTube. It's really cool. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's Disney news and reviews. Again, check out all the gaming with Final Adam and E stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm setting up all these new playlists. So again, they're not done yet, but I have 534 videos to go through. So I'm, I'm doing this a little bit at a time, but hopefully I'll be able to organize my videos enough into sections that you can enjoy. And plus I'm planning on uh, re-uploading the old 2011 uh, videos, you know, trip videos, uh, 
in time in different sections so if they get taken down at least you know i can just re-upload it or whatever hopefully they won't but we'll see what happens so yeah uh, if anybody from disney is watching please don't sue me i want people to go to disney world or disneyland and have a great time and while the, and, and while people are down there the reason why i do this month is to kind of you know have people look back and realize that this your parks evolve the disney parks evolve constantly there's good stuff that goes there's bad stuff that goes but either way it's always moving it's always shaking and that's why i love disney because it's no matter what you know what year you go you're going to see something different and uh it's fun you know i i, I really kind of don't envy the people that go every day because they see the change as it happens it's really fun to kind of go down and go down one year and then wait a couple years and then go down and see it the next year and have it you know completely fresh eyes that sort of thing uh, but but alas, go to Disney World or Disneyland and have a great time. If you are able to go every every day, obviously go every day because you're gonna have a great time. So, yeah. But uh, yeah, if you are going to Disney World or Disneyland, be sure to go to ours.nettoyingplans.com, www.magic.com for all your latest and greatest Disney news. WaltDisneyWorld.com is good too. So is Disneyland.com. And for Disneyland news, I go to Mice Chat. I didn't grab anything this week, but I'll get yeah, I'll get you some next week because I'm sure a bunch of stuff is happening over there as well. So yeah, um, I'll see you guys next week for another Disney News Reviews. We're still in Retro October 4x3. It's awesome, fun stuff. So guys, where in the land am I this week? Bye, guys. Just as a reminder, Main Street Station does not have any ramps. It is stairs only. So if you're going to be there...